Chris, any tips or advice that you give to a new patient, maybe who is newly diagnosed with your condition, starting, they're starting from scratch now, and you get the opportunity to meet them, you know, I know it's hard to tell them exactly what to do, but anything that strikes you from your experience of the last, uh, what, eight years or so? Yeah, there were two or three things actually that, that, that come to mind. And, and the, first, the first and most important thing for me is, is actually have patience and uh, be a patient patient because you spend a lot of time in, in the hospital environment in one way or another, sitting for appointments or having treatment. Um, particularly in my own case, it was long-term treatment. Uh, and things don't run like clockwork, they just don't. It's the health service, it's not like a hotel. Uh, and uh, things generally run late. So I've learned to be a very patient guy. Uh, and I think that's benefited me actually all around <laughs> as it happens. Uh, the second thing is, is don't be afraid to ask questions. I think that's a, that's a key one there. I think sometimes a lot of people, they're quite uh, overawed when they're talking to their clinicians. Um, you know, doctor, the, the, the title of a doctor for, for a lot of people is, is actually quite frightening. And uh, they don't like to feel, in many cases, people don't like to feel they're taking up the doctor's time. Uh, so they come away sometimes being quite unsure with some of the things that are actually going to happen to them. So I've always found that even with my guys that run not quite to time, but they always have the time for me. So, and they're quite willing to discuss treatment options and things like that. So that's, that's another key thing. And uh, the final thing that I found very important actually and, and helped really put me onto the work that I do currently uh, is volunteering because my health is so unreliable I found volunteering uh, an absolutely brilliant way of keeping my hand in updating my skills uh, and, and keeping remaining current really with the with the the workforce joining in being part of something mm. uh, I found that invaluable really to help me and it also gave me a better in-depth knowledge of of cancer and the, the sort of resources there were or weren't but it, but it gave me some form of that identification I was talking about earlier, I think. It gave me a, a purpose, mm. again, volunteering. Do you think it's important to find the right outlet in volunteering? I mean, I'm just thinking not all organisations are the same. Some may be like welcoming you with op open arms. Some may have a very specific role. Uh, how, how do you actually find the right thing for you? Uh, trial and error, mm. basically like a career. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I was quite lucky, as I said to you, I, I, I went to uh, a cancer charity and they welcomed me in with open arms, uh, of course. So I was been running my own business, right? So I'm sure I could do some data entry for them. Uh, but, but that led me on to another role and uh, I became a volunteer coordinator. So it meant that I could actually help people like me so for me that was brilliant because I could actually help the organisation and I could actually help a lot of people and I did that for a few years but then I got my wings I got my confidence back again so now I do that thing for myself. Mm.